Hello, and welcome back to King's Quest V. Absence makes the heart go yonder. Alright, we have finished up pretty much everything that we can do in town. There's only one more thing that we have to take care of. And after that, we can be on our way. Alright, so we're gonna come back to the inn. And, uh, we saw we went in here earlier. And it uh, didn't work out too well for us, so we're gonna go back in now. Ooh, I'll wait for you out here! Yeah, of course you will, Cedric, because you're a wimp. And we'll talk to these unsavory-looking fellows. Gentlemen, please excuse me. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Diana's full ain't got no more rooms. Hey, boss! This guy looks like a real troublemaker. What do you want me to do with him? Rub him out. Rub him out. Struggle as he might, Graham could not escape his bonds. Well, that's unfortunate. But fortunate for us. Yay! Kindness to small animals does pay off after all. Graham stoops down and picks up the sturdy rope from the stone floor. Might as well, right? A rusty padlock securing the door prevents Graham from leaving the cellar. Oh, well, that's a problem. Let's see, what could we do about that? Using the cobbler's hammer, Graham pounds on the rusty padlock until it breaks apart. Ta-da! And we're out. And before we leave, we'll plunder the place a bit. Inside the cupboard, Graham sees a large, juicy leg of lamb. Om nom nom. Reaching into the open cupboard, Graham pulls out the savory leg of lamb. Savory leg of lamb. <clears throat> There's nothing else that we can pick up here. Finding the kitchen door locked, Graham unlocks it before going outside. Well, okay, I was actually clicking on the pot, but whatever. All right. Look at that. We made it out in one piece. If we go back in, we just die, so I'm not going to worry about that. Oh, here's something interesting. I almost completely forgot to uh, take care of the tree. We got the golden heart uh, from the forest, uh, from the witch's forest, and I almost completely forgot to give it to her. My heart, you. Sorry. I don't need this old thing anymore. Conversation got cut off there. For Look at me, I'm a reason. princess again. Herbert. Alicia. Where have you been all this time, my love? Oh, darling, just take me home. I'll tell you on the way. And true love finds its way once more. I don't know why the conversation got cut off, like that first part where she talked. I don't, that was weird. Now, why would she toss aside this beautiful harp? Well, if she doesn't want it, I'll take it. Same thing happened with Cedric, actually, now that I think about it, on this very screen, in, in fact. Huh. Alright, one more thing I want to show you guys, because it's... Oh, right. Man, I'm forgetting all sorts of stuff today, aren't I? Graham notices a grassy clearing at the edge of the woods. Thank you. It's... A tambourine lies on the ground near the abandoned gypsy encampment. Not what I clicked on. Not seeing the tambourine's owner, Graham bends down and rescues it from the ground. Sweet. Um, as I was saying, there's one more thing that I want to show off before... Yeah, yeah. Before uh, we head out. And in order to show it off, I'm going to have to stand here and wait for a second. So I'll cut the video and I'll... Well, wait, there it is right there. It looks like something may be after him. Darn. 
missed it. If you've never seen one before, um, that's a Roadrunner. Like a, a real Roadrunner. Don't oh, shut up. I thought I'd have to wait for a long a bit longer before he showed up, but apparently not. It looks like something may be after him. Meep, meep. Hear that? <laughs> it's awesome. Don't. It's a nice little Easter egg. In case you didn't recognize it, um, that's the sound that the Roadrunner makes from the classic Wiley e. Coyote and Roadrunner cartoons uh, from Looney Tunes. It's a uh, one of honestly one of my favorite cartoons ever in the entire world are the Roadrunner and Wile E. Coyote cartoons and that whole scene right there where something was after him and then the little sound he makes was a an homage to those cartoons of old oh wait I'm going the wrong way anyway that's what I wanted to show you so we're gonna head off now there we go A large, venomous snake blocks Graham's passage to the east. It's a poisonous snake. All right. Well, we know how to get rid of poisonous snakes. Make another poisonous snake. Be gone, snake. you slithery varmint. Scat! You know, a lot of people have complained about that puzzle, saying it, that it didn't make any sense. But actually, I think it makes... a quite a bit of sense because you know you're using a tambourine to simulate the sound of a snake rattle and since you're a larger the snake would make you think that you're a larger snake would make the snake think that you're a larger snake it would make sense for it to scatter but eh, to each his own I suppose a few hours later Graham begins to shiver at the sudden drop in temperature Oh, well. Good thing we brought our cloak. Graham dons his warm cloak for protection against the freezing mountain air. Yay, I'm warm again. Now I won't turn into a Graham sickle. Alright. Well, kind of at the edge of a little precipice here. Nowhere to go but up. The icy cliff is much too steep for Graham to climb without help. Oh. That's unfortunate. At least we have a rope. The remains of an old tree poke out of the mountainside near an upper ledge. Oh, that looks sturdy enough, right? Oh, be careful, Graham! Oh, shut up, Cedric. What could possibly... Thanks for playing King's Quest V. Okay, so I guess something could possibly go wrong. Ever notice how Cedric doesn't really warn you about things until after it's too late to stop? Graham notices his stomach beginning to rumble with hunger oh, from the exertion up. of the mountain climb. Fortunately, this rock thing won't crumble. And I'm still grumbling from hunger, so... To make Graham that. finds the leg of lamb a bit tough, but tasty enough. Filling up quickly, he saves the other half for later. Oh, good. Alright. Now we've got another little situation. Graham can see tempting rock outcroppings protruding from the midst of the frozen waterfall. Oh, is it a waterfall? As with the path below, the now frozen waterfall has also washed away parts of this upper trail, which narrowly skirts the mountain edge and then heads off to the east. Huh. I never realized it was actually a waterfall. Hmm. Well, anyway... 
Let's see if we can get across here safely. Oh, do be careful, Graham. Shut up, Cedric. Gosh. was a doozy. I knew I shouldn't have clicked on that one, but it was it was too good to resist. I love his little scream when he falls. It's so comical. Sorry. Uh, we'll, we'll get across for real now. Shut up, Cedric. Gosh. Yay. And cross the log. Ta-da. See, Cedric? I'm still alive. Everything's fine. Help me! Oh. Cedric! Well, that's not good. I'm coming, Cedric. Hang in there, pal. I don't really like you, but I'm coming to save you anyway. Ah! Uh oh. That last step was a doozy. Well. That's not going to work very well. Alright then. We'll take a, no a different way down. Drat! My sled is broken. Aww. The broken sled is now no good to anybody. But but we could fix it. We could like tape it back together or something, right? I mean, oh well. Hello, Senor Eagle. A shivering eagle perches weakly upon a small rock. Despite his own problems, Graham's heart goes out to the poor thing. What's wrong, Mr. Uh, Eagle? <laughs> I'm so weak from hunger. I haven't been able to catch any food for days. I can barely fly anymore. I'd like to help you. Well, let me see what I can do. <coughs> Thank you. I need food. <coughs> Acting win. Here, take this. Perhaps it will help you. Pretty much the only thing I have that an eagle could possibly eat. You are a kind man to share your meager food with a poor bird, especially up here in these snowy mountains. Well, I couldn't just stand there and let you starve to death. What kind of person would I be? Of course not. You have shown yourself to be a kind, compassionate man, and I will not forget what you did for me. Goodbye, dear friend. That's good, because we're actually going to need his help here in a little bit. Uh-oh, this doesn't look good. I am Queen Isabella, and you have entered my domain now. Oh, hey, Cedric. I command you to kneel before me. Since both you and your friend over there have so thoughtlessly invaded my territory without my permission or knowledge, I have decided you shall both be put to death. Take him away, my pet. Now, now hold on a second. Can we talk about this? Or sing about this? Warning. This cartoon contains material that may... Wait, my pet. That was very lovely music. I've never heard anything quite that beautiful before. I think I felt my heart melting. Just a little bit. Just enough, that is, to allow you a chance for your freedom. A vicious yeti has entered the area and taken up residence in my prized crystal cave. So far, I have been unable to extricate him from either the cave or my territory. If you can rid me of the yeti, I will release both you and your owl friend and you two can continue on your journey unhindered. You may rise now. I wish you luck in defeating the Yeti. 
If you succeed, you will have my undying gratitude. You may go now. The Grey Wolf will lead the way. So you're Grey Wolf. Well, I guess they're not big on fancy names up here. Yonder's the crystal cave. There you will find the Yeti. I talk like I have marbles in my mouth. Alright. Let's go see what we can do about this Yeti thing. Oh, dear. Well, hmm. Maybe he's hungry. Have some pie? Too late! Too late! Oh, what an abominable situation Graham has found himself in. Wordplay fail. Eh, wordplay win, actually. Yeah. Hate it when I forget to save. Alright, uh, give me a second. We'll be right back. Alright, we're back. Sorry about that. Sooner than we had before. Now that one, I will admit, was a pretty dumb puzzle. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. <clears throat> All right. This is Brilliant crystals flashing and sparkling, and reflecting off the numerous waterfalls caused Graham to gaze in awe and wonderment at the dazzling spectacle before him. Quite beautiful. <clears throat> Quite beautiful. One particularly brilliant crystal catches Graham's attention among all the other glittering crystals in the cave. As strong as he is, even Graham can't break the stubborn crystal with his bare hands. Okay, we need to break the crystal with something else. So very gently, Graham hits the beautiful crystal several times with his hammer until it breaks loose in one piece. He then carefully places it among his other possessions. Well, now that we've defeated the Yeti and plundered the crystal caves. I see that the Yeti is dead. Queen Isabella will be pleased. Come. Follow me. Warning. This cartoon contains... Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, good. You have returned in victory, I presume. Yes, your majesty. The Yeti is dead. He will no longer be a scourge upon your realm. Are my friend and I free to go now? Yes. I keep my promises. I want to thank you for ridding my mountain domain of the horrible Yeti. Please rise, King Graham. Yes, I know who you are, and I have been informed of your quest. I do wish you luck against the wizard Mordak. You too may go. We wish you well on your difficult journey. Sir Grey Wolf will show you the way out of the mountain. So wait, you've been informed of my quest, and yet you still tried to kill me? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how that one's supposed to work. Alright, well, regardless, let's head down the mountain. Oh, snap. Everything is starting to fall. Graham, watch out! What? Oh. Oh dear. Thanks for warning me in time, Cedric. Or not. Well, this is quite a predicament. The huge egg is beginning to crack. 
This is a bad situation indeed. Indeed. What's this? Graham can see a glittering gold locket lying among the leaves and sticks of the rock's nest. Let's take Graham it. Graham rescues a lovely golden locket from the leafy clutches of the rock's nest. Uh, nice birdie. Good birdie. <laughs> uh, Gucci, Gucci, goo. Yeah. Hang on. I'll get you out of this. Hey, it's our eagle friend. Aw, oh, but we lost our cloak. We didn't pay good money for that. Thanks. Oh, Graham, where have you been? I've been looking all over for you. You'd never believe it, Cedric. You'd never believe it. Cedric's been looking all over for me, and yet he was just sitting there when I got back. Hmm. Yeah. Thanks, Cedric. Graham notices a rusty iron bar lying on the sand, near the bottom of the windy path. It must be a sandbar! Heh 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 heh. Sorry. Ooh, looks like there's a boat up there. Oh, whoops. Sorry, I have no idea what Cedric was just about to say, but it was probably something down. It's Cedric, after all. An old cast-off sailboat sits forlornly on the narrow sandy beach. Hmm. Well, heck. Come on, Cedric, get in the boat. Aye, aye, Captain. What else? There's a hole in the boat. What? Aww. Help, help. Come on. Forgotten Thanks how to swim. for playing King's Quest V. Apparently, Graham doesn't know how to swim anymore. Well, that's unfortunate. All right. Well, let's see what else we can find on this beach. Well, hello. A makeshift house, fashioned from the bow of a wrecked ship, occupies the south end of a small, narrow beach. Graham pounds on the door, but he finds it bolted from the inside. He can, however, hear activity within. Graham notices a ship's bell hanging near the door of the house. Who are you? And what are you doing on my beach? Your beach? I'm King Graham of Daventry, and I'm on a journey to find the wizard Mordax Island. But I seem to be stuck. I don't know where to go from here. Hey! What's that you say? Oh, well, you're a lot of help. Can't hear a darn thing. Alright, well... Let's see, we could use this boat, but it has a hole in it. So... Firmly, Graham wedges the softened piece of beeswax into the small hole in the boat's hull. Hopefully, the wax will hold and make her seaworthy. Hopefully. Come on, Cedric, get in the boat. Aye, aye, Captain. All right. Well, fortunately, it does make it make her seaworthy. Unfortunately, I'm not really sure on where I'm supposed to go from here because it's been a while since I've played the game. Um, I know I have to sail, but I can't recall where to exactly. But it obviously wasn't there. That was a nasty sea creature. And once again, Cedric warns us of the danger seconds before it approaches. I'm pretty sure if I keep sailing east, I'll eventually get eaten again. 
Yep. Graham, watch out! A poisonous sea creature. That was a ne- uh, Let's try south. Ah, there we go. Look, Graham. Ooh, an island. Perhaps we should explore it. Yes, I think we should, Cedric. Thank you for that wonderful insight, Cedric. You are amazing. What did I ever do without you? Ooh, Graham. I don't like the looks of this. Me neither. Oh, dear. I've had enough of flying today, thank you. Where did you find him, Minata? We found him on the beach. Isn't he luscious? Mm, I don't know. He doesn't look like my type. What do you think, Krulina? I think he looks too old and tough. Several hungry looking harpies eye Graham greedily as he frantically looks for a route of escape. To his horror, he sees none. Don't be so picky. Well, hey, it worked once before, fit. right? Cedric said yes. Cedric, where do you hurt? Ooh, everywhere. <coughs> All right, come on, let's get out of here. Graham notices a large conch shell lying delicately on the sandy beach. Yeah, even as much as you might hate Cedric, you can't help but feel sorry. Graham for bends over. Picks up the beautifully colored shell. I mean, he hasn't really done anything wrong, and yet he's still done. Kind of beat up. Hopefully this guy can help us. You still here? Please help me. I need your help. I can't hear you. Can't understand a thing you said. Gotta speak up, boy. Now get out of here. It's all that darn rap music you've been listening to. Turn your eardrums to mush. What's this? Now, what were you wanting? My owl friend is hurt. He was wounded by the harpies. Wounded by the harpies, did you say? We'll bring him on into the house. I'll fix him right up. Good as new. Funny how his mouth didn't move during that one. Lay him on the bed there. These poultices should fix the little fella up. Good as new. Fast. Ooh, I'm feeling better already. Tell me, what was in those pool kisses? My employer would be very interested in them. Hey, what was that? 
I said, what was in those porpoises? My employer would be interested in them. Gifts from the sea, lad. Gifts from the sea. Ain't nothing special. You just gotta know how to use them. I don't think he'd find them particularly interesting. Now, son, what was it you were trying to tell me before? I was trying to find out where the wizard Mordax Island is. He kidnapped my family and is holding them hostage there. I must get to them before it's too late. Oh, I'm right sorry to hear about that. He's a nasty one, that Mordak. I wouldn't want to tangle with him. I tried to talk you out of going there, except I can see you can't leave your poor defenseless family unaided. I can enlist someone who can lead you straight to his island. Follow me outside. Well, that's quite uh, coincidental. Providential, even. I'm pretty sure, yeah, there was supposed to be conversation there, and it just automatically got skipped. Honestly, I didn't do the thing. That, that bothers me, really. Are you all right, Cedric? Well, let me see. Oh, I'm fine, Graham. Just a bit ruffled at all. Yeah, um... The conversation was supposed to go something like, uh... The, you know, mermaid pops up, hermit's like, she can't understand human speech, but, um... She can take you to Mordax Island. And, uh, so she takes you. And that's pretty much all Unfortunately, there is. nothing can be done about the wrecked boat. I honestly... It appears that Graham and Cedric are stuck here, yeah. perhaps forever. Oh, that's wonderful. I honestly don't know why, um... Why we're... Why some of these conversations are being skipped. I apologize for that. I'm not sure what's going on. But anyway, we've run out of time for this Let's Play, so I'm gonna end it here. Thank you again for watching, and hope to see you again next time. See ya.